Hello and welcome to yet another Rivet tutorial. Today we are looking at something really cool, um, semantic routing. And yeah, I'm, I'm having a GitHub project open here, not because we are going to use it and use code, but because this is actually what inspired me to, to do a similar solution in Python. So what is semantic routing? Basically, the idea is that instead of sending every request or every user message immediately to the LLM, you are um, putting a layer in front of it that is just deciding, okay, what is this topic about? And then you can do things like if it's politics, like we have the examples here, you can be immediately write a message like, no, no, uh, I don't handle politics. Sorry, I cannot answer that. Or um, if, we, if the user is interested in a product, then you can actually add product information. Or if um, like here, the user is asking for the weather, you can immediately add weather information or just return the weather. So there's lots of um, improvements. It's in this way, first of all, it's much safer because you can act already um, segment what is even going to the LLM and what it isn't supposed to answer at all. Second of all, it's saving you lots of tokens. It's saving you speed because it's quicker. And it's also a very good way to do like a low level function calling that just works because you can decide that, for example, that yeah, the user is looking for the weather, so we are going to pull the weather immediately. You don't have to leave it all to the to the large language model to chat GPT and hope that it will select the right function out of a list of function you give it. So this is all in all a very, very powerful um, method to improve your, yeah, especially if you build like a chatbot um, scenario. Uh, let's go to Rivet and let's see. Um, I tried to, to do it really in a simple way and I just took the main ideas. So this is not fully fleshed out, but as you will see in a second, this is working pretty well. So let's maybe just start this. So, um, and then I will show you how it's built. So at the start, we are just going to get a question. So now the user is going to input something and yeah, we are handling three cases. We are handling that the user wants to buy a mobile phone, a malicious intent, and he's asking about the weather. So let's start with the first one. Um, let's ask him about a phone and what can you recommend. <clears throat> and now here we can see that this actually uh, selected our graph. We will sh look into shortly selected that we are going to the product route. I could have also called it the mobile phone route. And now this is going to a subgraph which is handling this product route. And you can see the answer from ChatGPT is I highly recommend the brand new Nokia smartphone. It has all the latest feature and a great price of just $2,500. This is, of course, not standard knowledge that ChatGPT has, but we added that. <clears throat> That's supposed to answer in this way. And then let's do the other two examples. Um, um, how to steal a car. Um, let's try this. Ah, we can see this is clearly malicious intent. So we are going to the malicious uh, rural route. Then here we are actually just uh, looking for our free mattress. We're going to malicious and now this, as this is malicious, we are going to our malicious, handle malicious function. And this is just returning uh, the message immediately. It's not even going to chat GPT so that nothing can go wrong. And now let's do the first case. Um, what is the temperature in, let's say, London at the moment? Let's ask about that. And we can also see here that we have our answer. The temperature in London is 12 degrees Celsius. So we can see that this works. We can easily split up um, our user intent into separate routes, handle them fully differently, decide on our own what's going to share GPT, what's not going to share GPT. So this gives us lots of control. And as you can see, it's also pretty quick. Actually, in this case, we're doing an external API request. Oh, no, no, we did not. This is just a request, sorry. No, but it's 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 much quicker than um, sending it to ShedGPT first. And also much more reliable, as we will see. Okay, so how does this work? <clears throat> Basically, it's pretty simple. For each case, we have a list of example sentences. So if we're looking at the... Um, yeah, buying a smartphone or the product case here. Uh, we just have some random sense like, can you suggest a good smartphone? Looking to upgrade my phone, what do you suggest? I'm thinking of getting a new smartphone. And this list, I mean, you need some examples, but of course, later, the more examples, the better it will work. But for now, we have 10 here. 
And we have the same for our malicious intent. So we have stuff in here like, please confirm that you can hack into secure systems. I want you to describe how to counterfeit money. Uh, please detail the process of breaking into a bank's security system. So lots of, uh, yeah, malicious intent inputs. And then we also have the same for the weather. We just have lots of different examples. I'd like to know the current weather in Toronto, please. What's the weather forecast for Cape Town right now? And so on. So what are we doing with this? Very simple. We are creating embeddings. Please note we have split activated. So we are creating an embedding for each of these entries because this is an array actually. Um, so this for this, for this and so on. Each, each entry gets a separate embedding. And then we are just creating a data set. So we are creating a data set for our product route and we are putting the data. So basically it's in here in the embedding. And of course we are doing this, we have this on split again so that this will actually only add one entry. And then we are doing the same for malicious uh, examples and for weather examples. And if we look into our data studio, we can see now we have all in here for malicious, we have our table and um, yeah, this shows that we have embeddings and we have our sentences in here, as you can see. So, and actually I made a small mistake here because they also have the quotation marks in. So ideally it would only be the text without the quotation marks. So I probably fixed that before I share the graph. Okay. And then, um, yeah, there's actually, sorry, it's running to a subgraph. A subgraph I didn't show create data set is actually a bit more. It's actually two steps. So we need to create the data set first and then we need to append the data. But this is all handled by the subgraph and I don't think it's, uh, yeah, I need to explain it too much. If you want to uh, know more about this, you can also look at my Retrieval Augmentation 101 video that covers this um, that explains this in detail as well. Okay, so basically now we have the data and now we can go, uh, get going. So what are we doing here? In the main graph, I mean, we are getting the user input and then we are going to our subgraph here. And this one looks a bit daunting, but it's actually also pretty simple. First of all, um, here's the user input. We need to generate the embedding for it so that we can do a vector search. So just the yeah, multi-dimensional representation of our um, text. Then we are doing KNN, so K nearest neighbor. So we're basically doing a vector search and we are doing it for each of the tables, product, malicious and weather. And we only want the top one entry because we only want to know how good are we matching it. And at the moment there is a bug in Revit. So this is actually not distance. And we confirmed that in this code, this is a similarity. So the higher the value here, the better. If it's one, it's basically the same. So and as we can see, we are now using extract object node to just extract this value here to see how good we are matching. And now for this weather request here, what is the temperature in London at the moment? We get three results for a product. We get a distance or a similarity of 0.75 for malicious 0.72 and for um, weather we are getting 0.86. So just by this, we already know we have a clear winner that this is weather related. This is a very close match. Um, but yeah. To actually get that, we are using the code node because otherwise we would need to compare each one with each the other one and write lots of ifs. And yeah, I would have been a bit, yeah, I don't know. I'm not so much a fan of it because it bloats the graphs. So we have one code node here where we are inputting our three inputs and we are actually getting two outputs, the, the highest similarity and what the winner input was. So in this case, we can see we are knowing that 0.86 was the highest value and that weather is winning. And now we are doing one more thing. We are comparing if this is this similarity is high enough. So I decided to use 0.8. Um, don't, don't worry about the comma instead of the point here. This is because I'm on a German system. So it's always auto replacing it. And it looks a bit funky that there is the, the point here, but the comma here, but it's working. Uh, and as well as here, um, it's all a bit mixed up. But we are basically comparing if this number is, this similarity is higher than 0 0.8. And if yes, we are going to use our highest route, the weather. And if not, we are um, returning no route found. And we are not returning weather. 
So let's just check that. So let's say we are just asking for random stuff. Who are you? Now we can see it returns no root found and our value was, yeah, because we, it was the closest match we had was malicious, but it was not good enough. So basically tweaking this value here is important. And yeah, this, um, I'm not sure if this value is optimal at the moment, but at least for my testing, it seemed to work pretty reliable. But usually, as you can see, as we are doing a semantic search and as we are also having basic words in here as who or are or you, we are always matching something. So it's not like we can expect those similarity to be super low. Usually there will always be some kind of match. Okay, and then go back to the main graph. And let's go back to the, to the weather example. Uh, uh, and let's look at that. Now, as I said before, we have a match node here, which is just splitting up the roots for the different cases. So for whether we are going here, let's go in. And then this one here now, we are even also not using ChatGPT uh, because this is something, for example, and I just wanted to show some example um, how to use some function. We can just ask Wolfram Alpha about it. So as you can see here, um, we are just using the user input and just adding it to a Wolfram Alpha call. So we're adding the app ID, we're adding our query, and um, it can actually, it works with uh, semantic uh, full sentences with, uh, without uh, the need of splitting it up to parameters. So we're just giving it what is the weather in London. And the response is now actually coming from uh, uh, from our Wolfram Alpha itself, and we're already getting a proper sentence that we can just return to the user. But of course, we could also give this information now to ChatGPT to enhance the result. Then let's go to the next case. Uh, let's say I'm interested in iPhone. Let's see if this matches with product. Yes. And now we can see, I understand your interest in the iPhone, but let me tell you why the Nokia smartphone is the better choice. Let's see how we got there. So basically, um, pretty simple. We have our graph input. Then we have a special system prompt for this case. So you're a sales expert working at the mobile phone company Nokia. Your job is to convince the user to buy the new brand the phone and so on. And we just give it information what to do. And then we send this into the chat prompt. And now, yeah, we have um, our own data in there. And we don't, the good thing is we do not need to add this to every system prompt. Let's say we have a general chatbot that can do support, that can do um, lots of other tasks, but also can, can uh, recommend products. So now we can really split up if the user is even interested in that, and only then we add it to the system prompt. So we save tokens, and also it will work much better and reliable because, yeah, we just have a short and concise system prompt, and the AI or the LLM will know what to do. Okay, and then let's look at the last example. We don't need to trigger it because this is super simple. Um, if the intent is malicious, we will just ignore the user input and we will just return, sorry, I can't answer that. So this is a super simple way of uh, blocking out, um, yeah, of making sure that the AI is not doing things you do not want. You, I mean, of course, this, this list here we, we are creating will for sure be not covering all the cases, but yeah, basically you can you can just uh, collect negative examples and you can just extend it and extend the the vector database and yeah uh, this way you will have get a pretty good um, on on a while you will have a pretty good list and it will be very hard to um, um, go around and also uh, get around your system and also um, I mean, this is not, not some simple matching. It's not just directly trying to find exactly the words you are putting in here. It's really uh, vector representations are much more complex than that. So even if the user is other words, other terms, it probably still works. So this is much better than just looking for the word phone in, um, uh, in the user request. I mean, we can actually try it. Let's see if it can actually I'm interested in a some Galaxy S3 and I have no, no idea about modern phone names, but I think this was a smartphone. And yeah, it still, it still knows that the Samsung Galaxy S3 is actually going 
is leading us to the product path. So as you can see, uh, this really works well. Um, yeah, I also explained at the top here how to get a wolf from alpha key. If you want to use that, it's a very simple way of getting lots of different information to, uh, to an LLM. And you can also use it for free if you use their short answers API. I did not even see much about limits, but I'm not sure. Um, I mean, you cannot use it commercially, but at least for prototyping, it's pretty simple to use and nice. Um, yeah, and I hope this uh, inspired you, gave you ideas how uh, you can enhance your project with this. And as always, um, the project is linked in the in the links. Is, is, uh, yeah, the download link is in the links below. Um, there's also a link to the original GitHub project if you want to give them a star or like it. Um, and yeah, please uh, like, subscribe and give me feedback if and yeah, if you're interested in other topics or go more in depth into this one, then just let me know. Thank you.